I'm about to show how far I have to go in my devotion because I can't even hold a candle to Damodar Maharaj's exposition on the verse. But the main point that I've taken from Damodar Maharaj and from Srila Gurudev's uh, discussions in the past on this topic is that devotional service has to be performed without any sense of personal aggrandizement, that one has to be completely dedicated to the object of devotion and that uh, one should not have any mixture um, in one's devotion for self-gain of any type, whether that's the acquisition of knowledge which leads one to ultimately to liberation and personalist realization or <clears throat> whether that's an even lower level of approaching Krishna for some material gain. Uh, these things are not accepted as pure bhakti. Um, when we tinge our bhakti, when we tinge our practices with some hope for personal aggrandizement, we can never obtain the object of devotion, which our acharyas are telling us is the highest goal of life. Furthermore, uh, after we examine ourselves and ask, is our bhakti pure? Is our intention pure in what we're doing? Uh, the next question is, are we actually performing that bhakti an, in an uninterrupted way? Uh, so are we starting and stopping? Are we waking up in the morning and doing our uh, whatever number of uh, rounds or malas that we do every day and then when we are done with our mala we put our bee bag down and forget Krishna or forget our Guru Seva. So everything that we do, whether it's uh, some practical seva, some practical service for the Guru, uh, serving the devotees, serving the holy name, uh, serving the deity, whatever we do, we should try to cultivate within ourselves an uninterrupted flow uh, where in our minds, in our hearts, we're constantly striving in a deep meditation for the attainment of our goal. Um, uh, the last thing that I'll be able to say today is that the ultimate goal of pure bhakti is the thing which gives all of these other things that we could possibly hope for and so much more. As Srila Gurudev said in the beginning of his class um, that the highest goal, the highest love and affection, the pure love of God, the pure love of Radha and Krishna, the most intimate aspects of the Supreme Lord are attained by this, um, uh, this pure bhakti. That's it. That's my humble offering to you. Oh, you can see it here and... Allah Vilasa Sunnam. But it has been told, Anna Vilasita Sunnam. Vita means? It told. What do you? Anna Vilasita. No. <laughs> he could not give, give attention. 
You, you, Prabhu, yes. So, <laughs> Johan, you should be ready for next day. <clears throat> But then you have to say what the question will be. Today you have to say what the question will be tomorrow. <laughs> then we should prepare. <laughs> really, you should understand what meaning is. To practice. I want that all should practice knowingly. Anya abhilash. Anya abhilash means other desires. So the desire that is required is the desire to serve Krishna and please Krishna favorably. <clears throat> and anya abhilash means any desire other than that. Any fruitive desire for uh, any karma performed for some material activity that's going to come. Or desire for jnana, desire for mystic siddhis, desire for merging into the into Brahman. So under Siddha Gurudev's inspiration, uh, Pujipad uh, Damodar Maharaj explained that if somebody has, generally they have no desire, but when an emergency arrives, then they may appeal to Krishna for help. Just like, for example. It is the duty of the devotee to protect his life, to protect his body. Like when Vasudev, uh, Vasudev, when Devaki was being attacked by Kansa. So it's explained that the devotee has to protect his life because his life is being used in the service of Krishna. So if some external agency comes and threatens the devotee's life, then it's okay to appeal to Krishna, oh please help me because otherwise how I can serve you. Then, if Krishna likes to protect, it's okay. Otherwise, if he doesn't, the devotee also accepts that. For example, uh, Ambarish Maharaj, when he was confronted by Duvas Muni, Duvas Muni, somehow or other, he became very angry with Ambarish Maharaj, pulled out some of his dreadlocks, threw it on the ground, and this huge fiery demon came. So Ambarish Maharaj, actually, he made no appeal. It's not recorded that he made any appeal to Krishna. He just folded his hands and he waited. Oh. If Krishna wants to burn me up, it's okay. If he wants to come in the form of a fiery demon, it's okay. Krishna didn't want. He sent Sudarshan Chakra, and Sudarshan Chakra burnt up the fiery demon. Uh, and then chased Duras Muni. But in any case, so the, the devotee, he may appeal, but in any case he accepts Krishna's decision. Okay, if you like to protect me, it's okay. Otherwise, it's okay. Thakur Bhakti Vinod is saying, you can kill me, you can save me, as you like, because I'm your property. Sold out animal. Sold out animal doesn't make any endeavor. He just appear, he's just relying completely on the uh, master. So, anyabilash, the shunyam. Not just anyabilash, but the tendency to have these desires. In the general run of things, the devotee does not have such desires. Only in the case of emergency, he may have. Anyabilash, the shunyam. Jnana, karmadi, and avartam. So, generally speaking, Uh, there's no need to engage in karma to improve our bhakti. Karma cannot improve bhakti. On the contrary, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur explains in Madhuri Kadamani, uh, Srila Gurudev was explaining during Kartik, that only when there is some mixture at least of bhakti, then karma can be successful, otherwise not. Similarly, only when there's some admixture of, gyan, uh, of bhakti, then jnana can be successful, otherwise not. Just like, for example, if somebody wants to get liberation, so they can practice for hundreds and thousands of lifetimes. But if they just chant the holy name, by uh, Nama Abhas, they can get liberation. Like this. So, Jnana Karmadya Anavritam. Avritam means covered. Anavritam means not covered. So, actually, we have to perform karma. Gurudev has explained, breathing is also karma. Now we're walking backwards and forwards between the hotel and here. This is karma. We had to make some money or somehow or other get some finances together to come here. This is also karma. So does that mean that our bhakti has been covered? No. Anavritam, because the whole goal is to engage in devotional service. The whole goal is to 
hear from the lotus mouth of the pure devotee. Therefore not avritam, it's anavritam. And jnana also, we have to have some knowledge. Oh, we must have knowledge. Like it said, somebody said that Aristotle said that the brain actually isn't used for thinking. It's just used for cooling the blood. But some modern commentator, he said, this is only true of some people. <laughs> so in other words, actually we have to think, we have to have some knowledge. But if that knowledge is furthering our bhakti, then it's okay. The knowledge, for example, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality Godhead and the Jeev is the tiny servant of Krishna, this jnana is necessary. Wow. Not the knowledge that the individual Jeev is actually God or that he's actually part of Brahman. This is not necessary. But then at the end, we have even this knowledge, Sri Rupa Goswami says, even this knowledge has to be given up, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality Godhead. Just like Sri Gurudeva said that your Swami Maharaj, he came to teach you that Krishna is the Supreme Personality Godhead. And I've come to teach you to forget that Krishna is the Supreme Personality Godhead. But we also have to be careful because you can't, according to linguistics, you can't forget something that you never knew in the first place. So if we artificially try to imitate Srila Gurudev's mood, Bright's mood, that Krishna is not the Supreme Personality Godhead. Yashodam, I never think that Krishna is the Supreme Personality Godhead. The gopis never think. So if we artificially think, ah, Krishna, we don't care for Krishna. He's just a black cheat anyway. What do we care for Krishna? We just love Radha. This will not work. We, have to, we should have tattva, just like it was explained this morning. First of all, we have to have tattva. If we don't have tattva, then we have to come back and learn tattva. And then by hearing from the lips of the pure devotee, his braj moods of loving service to Krishna in complete n neglect of Krishna's Bhagavata, this will naturally sweep out these moods from our heart. Anukulyena. So, Yashoda Maharaj is chastising Krishna. So what is Krishna feeling? Ah, he's feeling fear, but he's also feeling her love. Just like we have experience, sometimes we're traveling in Russia. So some, sometimes then the Russian devotees have to discipline us. Oh, now you have to take rest, now you have to take some exercise, now you have to do this, now you have to do that. Very strict, some of them very strict, almost ferocious. <laughs> but in that strictness, you can feel, oh, there's love. Just like Krishna also, he likes to taste that. This is the beauty of the left-wing gopis. When Krishna at Kurukshetra, he met with the gopis. The gopis hadn't seen him for so long. And instead of Krishna apologizing to the gopis, that, oh, I'm so sorry, I haven't been back to Vrindavan. Uh, how are you like this? He started that, oh, why are you feeling separation from me? Don't you know I'm the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Don't you know if you just meditate on my lotus feet, you won't feel any separation, don't you know this? And the right-wing gopis, they say, oh, very nice, thank you, we, we accept this. And the left-wing gopis, oh, you think we should engage in meditation on your lotus feet? We're trying to forget you. <laughs> so strong, they're giving him the sauce so strongly. Chastising, chastising, like anything. And Krishna's feeling their love so much. So this is Anukul. This is Anukul. Krishna Anusilana. And, oh, as uh, Sri Patamada Maharaj explained. So we have to make some effort, some endeavor. Not only physical endeavor. Srila Gurudeva is emphasizing. Sometimes people go out and they're making life members, they're distributing books, so many things. So I'm performing so much service. And I will go back home back to Godhead at the end of this lifetime. No, we have to. Moods also, Chesta. That difference between Kanishtadikari, Madhyamadikari. Madhyamadikari is offering with mood. Kanishtadikari is like offering chunks to Krishna, chunks of matter. Therefore, he's prakritabhakti. He's offering prakriti. Krishna doesn't need our prakriti. He doesn't need our incense. He's got lovely incense, lovely fruit, lovely flowers, everything in the spiritual world. But he wants this mood from the heart. So this kind of anushilanam also is required. So there's so many points. Hare Krishna. Very good explanation. <laughs> My Shiksha Guru, Srila Bhaktivedan Swami Maharaj, came in Western countries and he told everywhere, Krishna is Supreme Lord. 
बट आई हैव कम टू से फॉर गेट दिस कृष्ण इज नॉट सुप्रीम लॉर्ड वी शुड बी ब्रजभाषी एंड ट्राई टू फॉर गेट दिस थिंग ऑलवेज ही नंदन ही इज द सर्वेंट ऑफ ऑफ ब्रजभाषी ऑल दीज थिंग्स ही कैन बेग पॉडन इन दोटल फीट ऑफ गोपीज हाउ ही इज सुप्रीम लॉर्ड so we should try to forget forever <laughs> and be one of the brijbasi very good ankulle na krishna anushilanam hmm? what is ankulle one of the ladies should tell oh he knows she knows other you stand up no no that oh you 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 yes stand up uh, krishna priya no oh yes krishna priya yeah. well oh yes and understand what is the meaning what do you mean by ankulena <laughs> anukulena means everything that's favorable for bhakti so anukulena means we should reject everything that's unfavorable unfavorable for bhakti anvai anushilanam anushilanam is like dedicating yourself to krishna and offering everything to him and um rejecting everything that's unfavorable <laughs> for your bhakti <laughs> try to understand and preach by mission all ladies all my my dear sons and brothers they should know all these things and then you can preach otherwise what book distribution this will not do you will have to see what are what is the under the books then sit down <coughs> now we know from shrimad bhagavatam that dhru maharaj did astrology and he took darshan of narayan his, his bhakti is pure or not jeev ओम ज्ञानतिमरंदनाशलाकय चक्षुर्मलिदेन तस्म श्री गुरव नम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आफ्टर माई रिस्पेक्टफुल अभिशीज टू माई स्पिरिशल मास्टर ओम विष्णु भगवंत ग्रंथ नारायण महाराज एंड एन टू ऑल द वैश्व नवर्स प्रेजेंट हियर टुडे श्री गुरुदेव इज आस्किंग दैट ध्रुव महाराज ही टुक डायरेक्ट दर्शन ऑफ नारायण ही गॉट दर्शन ऑफ कृष्ण ऑफ भगवान ऑफ गॉड बट वॉज हिज बाकी प्योर 
does it fall under the category of this sloka that we've been discussing, Anya Bilasi Tasunyam. If we understand a little bit about the history of Dhruva Maharaj, he was, a, he was a prince. And at that time, his father, no, one of his stepmothers told him that he can't sit on the lap of his father. Right? And he was very hurt by this. And because of this, he went into the forest and performed austerities for a very long time. And, and then eventually Narada Rishi came and gave, gave him mantra. And he, by performing this, he got Darshan of Narayan. But during the time of his practice, what he wanted was to have a kingdom greater than his father. A kingdom that is, yeah, a kingdom greater than his father. This was, Gurudev explains in Matur, Bhajane Bhavive Jaha Siddhite Paive Taha. That whatever you think of in the time of Bhajan, whatever you're praying for, when you're practicing or cultivating your spiritual life, in perfection you will attain this. Like that. So when he took Darshan of Narayan, he realized that what he was aspiring for, what he was looking for, was not, not worthwhile. It wasn't worth it. Right? He actually said, I was looking for broken pieces of glass and I found a diamond. But he didn't want this. But still because at the time of his practice of bhakti, of, not of bhakti, of his sadhan, he still had, is still in Dhruvlok now. There. So the answer, according to my understanding, is no. His bhakti was not completely pure. It was not according to the sloka of Srila Rupa Goswami, Anya Bilashita Sunyam. Okay. Now, Dhru Bhakti is not pure. It is called Shakam Bhakti with worldly desire. Though he is disciple of Narad, and by the grace of Narad, he took the darshan. But he wanted, oh, I should be the king of my father's property. Not of, not this. He received the, he became the king. He became the king. No? But at the time of departure from this world, when chariot came, Biman came, for him to take him, then he told, I will not go alone. I want that my mother, she should also go with me. And then, oh, your mother is going, you should come. And he went. So he received a position, not in Paikuntha, but Hari Dok in this Brahmanda. Rama Priya Baikuntha, not there. And nothing service, like a king. So this is not pure bhakti. So don't have any worldly desire. Only how we can serve Krishna. Whatever you do, to please Krishna, Guru, Vaishnava. This is all. Don't do anything. If you are eating, eat for Krishna. Sleeping for Krishna. How? By any sadhu who has realized you should learn this very thing. Now, Pradhat Maharaj, how is his bhakti? You can. Om Ajnanam Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chatsurun Ritam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Venama First I offer my unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Diksha Guru Dev Mitalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Padas Totara Satashri Srimad Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Shiksha Gurudev, 
Om Vishnu Pada Stotra Sita Sri Srimad Shri Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Gosai Maharaj. To all of our Guru Varga and all the assembled devotees. Srila Gurudev has ordered me to explain about the nature of the bhakti of Sri Prahlad Maharaj. We hear and read for many chapters in the seventh canto Srimad Bhagavatam about the glories of Sri Prahlad Maharaj. We, of course, hear about how he was protected by Lord Nishringadev in so many circumstances when he was being attempted to be killed by his father. His father threw him in a pot of boiling oil, threw him in a fire at the feet of elephants in a blizzard. He threw him off a cliff and Prahlad Maharaj never uh, begged the Lord to save him, but rather he was always meditating on the Lord in full confidence that the Lord would save him, would protect him. We see that Pallad Maharaj did not ask Krishna, even at the time of danger, even at the fear of death, at the time when life is threatened, he did not pray to Krishna. And yet, we've just heard that Draupadi prayed to Krishna when there was an attempted derobment by the Asatsabhaya, the assembly of crude and rude men, Dusasana, Duryodhana, and others. She prayed to Krishna. So are we to understand then that Draupadi's bhakti is less than Pallad Maharaj's? No, because each of these devotees wants to show us something different. Draupadi, being one of the Pandavas, is on a higher level of bhakti than Prahlad Maharaj because their worshipable deity is Lord Dwarkadish, who is a more complete form of the Lord than Lord Nishingadev. So the bhakti of Draupadi is higher. How is it that she prayed and Prahlad didn't pray? We have that verse that uh, Sripad Damodar Maharaj quoted the last line, Anukulyena Krishna Anusilanam. Anusilanam means perpetually engaged for the glorification, pleasure, welfare of Krishna. Perpetually, just like a stream of honey falling from a jar is not broken at any time. So their desire to please Krishna is not broken even at the time when there's danger. So how is that apparent contradiction there? Even when Draupadi prayed to Krishna to save her, this was for the glorification of Krishna. Krishna showed he was in Hastinapur, he was in Dwarka and she was praying in Hastinapur and she was trying to protect herself and at the same time praying to Krishna. So Krishna was running around his palace and his queen said, where are you running around in circles? He said, well, my devotee Draupadi is praying to me. Then they said, why don't you go? So he said, she's not fully surrendered yet. And then as soon as she lifted both arms and prayed, if you like, you can save me. Then even without his shoes, he ran because she had full dependence. So it's not that Draupadi has any less bhakti. She did it for Krishna's glorification. That's the only desire of all the devotees. Similarly, Prahlad Maharaj, all of his activities are for the glorification of Krishna. And therefore, he didn't pray to Krishna knowing that Krishna would protect him, having that full dependence. So why is it said that the bhakti of Prahlad Maharaj who is in Prema Bhakti, he's situated in Prema Bhakti, he's a Mahabhagwat, and his, uh, his slokas, his verses of explanation of Krishna's glories are quoted by all great spiritual masters. In all of Srila Gurudev's uh, tours, in every single country, he has the devotees discuss the teachings of Prahlad Maharaj to his father, he has 
them discuss the teachings of Pallad Maharaj to his friends, glorifying the worship of the pure devotee, explaining how even uh, by one's intelligence, even by the collective intelligence of others, without devotional service, one is simply engaged in the matter of chewing the chewed. Pallad Maharaj is the one who explained that one should perfect his life by putting all over his body, smearing his body with the dust from the lotus feet of pure devotees who are completely free from all desires. Even when Pallad Maharaj grew up, still his glories are broadcast all over the world. We hear about the success of Bali Maharaj. That success of Bali Maharaj is there due to Pallad Maharaj's love for the Lord. Therefore, the Lord showed mercy to Bali Maharaj. Even when Pallad Maharaj became a king, the Lord was so kind, showing the greatness of Pallad. Pallad Maharaj was the king, and it's the king's duty to establish uh, the principles of Varnashram and to make sure that all the um, Varnas and Ashrams are performing their duties properly. A king should act like a king, a Brahmin should act like a Brahmin, and it's the king's duty to make sure of this. So once he saw a Brahmin, but this Brahmin had weapons. So he challenged him, are you a Brahmin or are you a Chetriya? Make up your mind. You have to do one duty and do it properly. And if you don't follow my instructions and follow one particular Dharma, then I'm ready to challenge you to fight. So he had a fight with this who knows Brahman or who knows Chatriya. And in the middle of this, he wasn't winning and this Brahman or Chatriya wasn't winning. And then he realized that nobody can defeat me in battle except the Lord. So he did some meditation in trance and understood that this must be my very Lord Nishringadev. And he saw there was a garland on this Lord Nishringadev, the garland that he himself had offered to his deity that morning. So he surrendered to the Lord and the Lord said, no, you have actually defeated me. So Pallad Maharaj's glories are sung all over the universe. But what kind of bhakti, because as Sri Padamadar Maharaj was explaining, Anyabi lasita sunyam jnana karmadiya navratam. One's bhakti should not be covered by personal desires and by gyan or by karma. So, of course, some kind of gyan, he explained, must be there. I have to know that if I cross the street and a car is coming, I'll be killed. So gyan must be there, but it can't cover bhakti. So, Prahlad Maharaj is a gyani bhakta. That means he has knowledge or awareness of the supremacy of Lord Nishringadev. He, in his uh, very, very famous prayer, um, Shravan, Kirtan, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam, he uttered the word Vishnu. He knew that Lord Nishringadev is Vishnu and he's a worshiper of Lord Vishnu. And because of that, when Lord Nishringadev appeared to him, he didn't think that, well, perhaps my Lord is thirsty or sweaty from killing my father. Maybe I should wipe the perspiration off his face or offer him a drink of water. He didn't think like that because he knows my Lord is everywhere. He's all pervading and he's all powerful. Therefore, there's no hunger or thirst in him. There's no need for me to render personal service to him. He engaged in service of glorifying, but no personal service. This, is, this means that his bhakti was somewhat covered by jnana, not speculative jnana, not like a jnani that God is impersonal, but thinking that, or knowing that he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, his pure uh, uttama bhakti was covered by his knowledge that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, there are greater and greater bhaktas like Uddhav and the Pandavas, and ultimately, beyond even bhakti, beyond these bhaktas is the residence of Vrindavan, 
who are fully engaged in his personal service, not at all knowing that he's the Supreme Lord. Thank you. Go Pralat Maharaji, pure bhakta, but jnani bhakta. His bhakti is mixed with Aishwarji Gyan. So whether he don't want any worldly desire, but Anukulena Sevanam, he thinks that my Supreme Lord is everywhere, very powerful. He is the father of world, creator of the world. He never tires, so no use of message. Oh, he never hungry, thirsty. So like Draupadi, he used to cook for Krishna, and Krishna used to take. So his some as for Jamisha. Though Prahlad Maharaj is Siddha Bhakta, but Ambrish Maharaj, not Siddha Bhakta, but he is superior in Bhakti. How you? In brief, you should understand the uh, graduation of Bhakti. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshuru Nivalitam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha So in the discussion, the gradual progression of bhakti and its uh, stages of increasing purity, now we come to the uh, understanding of Ambarish Maharaj, who is a Shuddha Bhakta. He is actually following purely this verse that Srila Gurudev is having us uh, study. Anya Pilashita Shunyam Jnana Karma Adhyanavritam Anakul Yena Krishna Nushilanam Bhaktir Uttama. Sri Ambarish Maharaj, he was a great emperor thousands of years ago, living in Mathura. And the story is delineated of the history of Ambarish Maharaj and Durvasa Rishi, how Durvasa Rishi uh, attempted to kill Ambarish Maharaj. We heard that described before. And the Sudarshan Chakra of Lord Narayan was sent to protect Ambarish Maharaj. So Ambarish Maharaj, what was his standard of worship of Krishna? Actually, Savaimana Krishna Padara Vindayor Vachamsi Vaikunta Gunanu Varanane Ambarish Maharaj utilized every single one of his senses in the service of Krishna in a very practical way. He was constantly thinking of Krishna 24 hours daily. Savaimana Krishna Padara Vindayor His mind was absorbed in the lotus feet of Krishna. Vachamsi Vaikunta Gunanu Varanane. His tongue was utilized in constantly glorifying and describing the activities of Krishna. And he was, he, all of his limbs of his body were also utilized. Sometimes he would be utilizing his feet to go traveling and walking on uh, pilgrimage to the holy places where Krishna performed his pastimes. Uh, sometimes he was utilizing his arms even in cleansing the temple of Krishna, personally cleansing Krishna's temple, although he was a great emperor. He did not employ someone else to do this, because if you employ someone else to do the, the bhakti in your temple, uh, that does not mean that you are performing bhakti. So he personally did this worship of the Lord. His eyes were utilized in seeing the very beautiful deity forms of Krishna in the temple. His ears were utilized in hearing the glorification of the Lord. His nose was utilized in smelling the beautiful fragrance, sweet fragrance of the flowers and tulsi offered to the lotus feet of Krishna. So like this, all of his senses, his mind, his intelligence, 
everything was completely absorbed in Krishna 24 hours daily without any other ulterior motive, only what has been described, Anakulyena Krishna Anushilanam. <clears throat> 24 hours daily under the guidance of his uh, guru and Vaishnavas he was constantly absorbed in serving Krishna for Krishna's pleasure and happiness so Maharaj Ambarish he was fully absorbed in Krishna it is stated Savai Mana Krishna Padara Vindayo Krishna was his worshipable Lord his Ishtadev and he was also living where was he living? in Mathura the eternal abode of Krishna, the transcendental holy dham of the Supreme Lord. So Ambarish Maharaj, he was protected by the Supreme Lord uh, when someone tried to attack him, and as was described, he was un unmoved by this. He was not disturbed, he was not fearful, because his whole consciousness, his, all of his desires were completely merged with the will of the Supreme Lord, Therefore, if Krishna wants to kill me, I accept that. If Krishna wants to protect me, let it be. So this was Maharaj Ambarish's mood. And therefore, uh, when Durvasa Rishi came to see, finally, he, first of all, he approached for protection to Lord Brahma, then to Lord Shiva. Both of them told him, I cannot protect you. The Sudarshan Chakra is coming from Lord Narayan. You have to go there yourself. And then at that time, he finally went and uh, approached Lord Narayan directly. And what did Lord Narayan say to him? He said, uh, actually, my bhakta is my very heart and soul. And I am not independent of my bhakta. So my bhakta is always absorbed in thinking of me. And I am completely absorbed in thinking of him. In this way, uh, Lord Narayan told Duvasa Rishi, you must go to the lotus feet of Maharaj Ambarish, and there you will have to fall at his feet and beg forgiveness. So this is what Durvasa Rishi did. He came there, traveling back again, and fell at the lotus feet of Ambarish. Ambarish Maharaj, during the time that Durvasa Rishi was uh, traveling throughout the universe, Ambarish Maharaj did not even break his fast, his fast uh, of Ekadasi. Uh, he stayed put in that same place and constantly he was praying to the, to the Sudarshan Chakra of the Lord. And it is, was because of this reason that the Sudarshan Chakra did not finally kill Durvasa Rishi. So when Durvasa Rishi came and fell at the lotus feet of Ambarish Maharaj, <clears throat> then Ambarish Maharaj prayed directly to Sudarshan Chakra and he was appeased and then he left that place. And then, oh, uh, Durvasa Rishi, he was so deeply moved by witnessing this great uh, quality of the pure devotee. Uh, he said, Oho Ananta Dasa Anam, now I have seen today with my very own eyes the greatness of the servants of the Supreme Lord, who is known as Ananta, the Supreme Unlimited Lord. Now I have seen that even though I wanted to kill him, he only wanted my benefit. So Maharaj Ambarish was glorified in this way by Durvasa Rishi. And uh, this story in Srimad Bhagavatam is showing us the superior position of Ambarish Maharaj, even to that of Prahlad Maharaj. Although Prahlad Maharaj is a Siddha, he's a perfected personality. He has uh, fully realized the Supreme Lord and he was protected directly by Lord Nishringadev. Lord Nishringadev personally appeared to protect him. So he is not a sadhaka who is only practicing to attain perfection, but he has actually attained that stage. Uh, but, uh, but Ambarish Maharaj, still he is in the level of sadhaka, that he is performing sadhana. Sadhana means spiritual practices to attain uh, perfection, siddha. But yet, Ambarish Maharaj's position is considered superior to that of Prahlad Maharaj. Why? Because as has been described, Prahlad Maharaj had some mixture of jnana, knowledge about the Supreme Lord. That knowledge is not uh, a covering of his bhakti, as has been described, jnana karma dhyanavritam. The knowledge did not cover his bhakti, 
because he was not on the material level. He was pure, pure and transcendental, no material desires, only desires to please the Supreme Lord. But his conception of the Supreme Lord and how to please him and how to serve him was not as high as that of Ambrish Maharaj because he had Gyan Mishra. He realized the uh, Supreme uh, Aishwarya of the Supreme Lord that he is everywhere, he knows everything, he is eternal, he, his, he no, has no material body, he does not need to eat, to drink or anything, he has no material needs. And in this way, being absorbed in this transcendental uh, knowledge of the Supreme Lord, his bhakti was somewhat weakened by this knowledge, therefore he did not perform any personal services to the Lord. Like we hear about Ambarish Maharaj personally serving the deity form of the Lord in the temple and do, using all of his senses to do so many services. So that's why Ambarish Maharaj is considered superior position to Prahlad Maharaj because of, uh, of the type of bhakti that he was performing. It is more intimate and it is directed toward Krishna in Braja in Vrindavan. His Ishtadeva is of, also of a superior position to that of Prahlad Maharaj who is worshipping Vaikuntha Narayan. So like this, Srila Gurudev is explaining to us that we must understand the gradations of bhakti. First we have to understand what is Uttam Bhakti, the, the, the definition of that which we have studied today in so many different ways, so many speakers have described uh, all the details of that verse written by Rupa Goswami, we must understand because if we do not perform Uttam Bhakti, pure Bhakti, then we will not receive the result. Only by Uttam Bhakti, as it is stated, Srila Gurudev stated in the, the first verse that he quoted today from Srimad Bhagavatam, Savai Pungsam Paro Dharmo Yato Bhaktir Adhokshaje Ahoy Tuki Apratihata Ye Atma Sam Prasidati. Atma Sam Prasidati means that the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Paramatma, He will be completely satisfied. Only when Krishna is completely satisfied by one's bhakti can it be considered Uttam Bhakti, topmost pure bhakti. So in this way, by studying the gradations of bhaktas and understanding their corresponding levels and qualities and services and moods, then we can understand this differentiation. And then when we study, as Gurudev is leading us, ultimately to, to understand the highest bhakti of the bridge bhasis, who have completely no knowledge that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. They love Him only as their dear most friend, their dear most child, their dear most beloved. And in this way, their bhakti is the very, very topmost type of Uttam Bhakti. So in this way, by the mercy of Srila Gurudev and by the mercy of all of our Vaishnava Charjas, especially Srila Sanatan Goswami, who all of this discussion is based upon his Brihat Bhagavatamritam, which Srila Gurudev has lectured on many, many times in his tours. We begin to understand this process of attaining Shuddha Bhakti, pure Bhakti. Now they should be ready uh, drum up. But you should stand up and you should re re do recreation by your magic. Uh, 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 uh,